Gaia van der Esch was born in a small Italian village and raised to be a global citizen, she told me, by Italian and Dutch parents. And after leading the G20 Empowerment Alliance, which works with CEOs and ministers to advance policies and actions that empower women in the workforce and various international appointments and think tanks, you were recently appointed the managing director of 3.0 which is a global movement to build a world with, a, with zero exclusion, zero carbon, and zero poverty. And there's some crazy numbers with thousands of staff in lots of countries around the world and providing support to many millions um, across the globe. So I'm uh, super excited to have you on stage. Thank you for joining us. And uh, let's start. Um, in our briefing conversation, I got a sense from you, Gaia, that you are someone that is all about action. And I'm interested in the human element here. Um, where do you think this drive to roll up your sleeves and get active and change things, where, where does it come from? Well, as you said, I'm Italian Dutch. So going to the human element, I think I have a Dutch, very pragmatic, efficient side. But I grew up in Italy, which I don't know if there are any Italians in the audience. It's not a country where much happens and you need to do a lot by yourself because bureaucracy, decision making, everything is relatively slow and not very actionable. And, and I just think it's this mix. I remember being a kid, I grew up in this small village, as you said. I remember being a kid and literally going, I would always go and see the mayor of the village with my list of complaints of what was not going okay. Um, and it was very stupid things, but for me they were very important back then, such as, I don't know, the scooters that were disturbing our playing area and there shouldn't be scooters. And always going to the mayor with my list of things, okay, the swing is broken, the scooters are disturbing, how can it be fixed? And that Nothing would ever happen and I would just by myself roll up my sleeve and find solutions and I don't know I remember once emptying my my dad's supply of wood uh, for the winter and putting it in the middle of the street with all my friends to stop the scooters from entering so I think it's something that I've always had in the smallest things but I always kept with me because I think action is really what can get us going, what can make a difference. And of course, it's important to think, it's important to strategize, but to really drive change, even small actions, they're always your starting point and then they become bigger and then you actually can make a difference. Wonderful, thanks for sharing. Um, I mean, I think many people in the audience sort of have a general sense of that connection, but help us understand the three areas that 3.0 is working on, which is exclusion, climate change and poverty. Where exactly are the linkages for you and where there's also the areas for intervention maybe in those linkages and in those connections? I think paint, paint the picture a little for us, please. I'll, I'll paint the picture. So I come from Europe. Uh, so I, of course, come from, let's say, the global north. Uh, I started my career as a humanitarian worker. Um, so I was working in the Middle East for quite a few years um, on Syria, on Iraq, um, on, on the war, the very beginning of the Syria war, actually. And, and I've been in Africa, I've been in Asia, I've been in many different contexts, right? And I think what's interesting, and also from my experience when I was with the governments, with the G20, what's interesting is that we build global agendas based on how we see the world. So climate change is one problem there. Poverty is one problem there. Uh, I don't know, exclusion, democratic participation is another set of problems. But that's not how the world is built. That's not how reality is. This is our way connected. of... Yeah, everything is connected. Like for a person living in Somalia, it's not like in this daily life of like, oh, this is linked to poverty. Oh, this is linked to climate change. Oh, this is... Everything is part of one. It's us that structure systems because it's a way of responding, of structuring, or reflecting, of taking decisions, but it's not how the reality is structured. And I think that's one of the big problems that make also our responses, both in terms of large, big policy making, but also in terms of actual responses on the ground, less efficient, because they're not structured based on the reality, on the people, on their needs. They're structured based on our need to structure, to then be all the ministers of environment sitting together and taking a decision. But if you don't take account in account that they are 
actually connected for the real people on the ground, you're not going to have a response which actually responds efficiently. And you might, for example, lift someone out of poverty, uh, but then, of course, that person becomes the consumer, so the poverty agenda is happy, the climate change agenda is not happy, and, and, and there are all these trade-offs that start being created because we don't see things in a holistic way to start with. And, and that's where we try to come in, right? As 3.0, what we, what we really want to do is to try and help other actors, be it private sector, be it startups, innovators, philanthropy, governments, of course, international aid development actors, which is where we come from uh, as a nature, to work together because we don't work enough together. When we hear all these discussions, how do we get the lost and damaged scheme to the people that need it the most, the response is not a government fund because in a, in a lot of the places where there are people that need it the most, governments don't manage to get there because it's fragile states, because it's very remote areas, it's people or communities that are already excluded. So we need to be able to work together in a different way from what we do. I think we speak a lot about it, we don't know how to do it. Mm. And we actually want to bring actors to do it in terms of multi-sector platforms that converge for real action for the two billion poorest people, making sure that they have a real just transition that we all speak about, but we're not sure how we're actually going to get it off on the ground. Yeah, thank you. And I think you, you touched on something that also Nathan, Pim and Omnia touched upon, which is the interconnectedness of all those issues. And it really seems like we have to do everything at the same time because you can't do a little screw here and a little screw there. You need to address it all simultaneously. Um, there's an impressive number of people involved in 3.0 and the work that you do and also the number of beneficiaries. I was quite, quite impressed. And you sort of outlined the general approach to what you're doing. Can you specify it uh, a little more practically, maybe with an example of a project or wh what exactly is happening on a day-to-day -day basis um, in your teams across the world? Wh yes. What are they doing? So, so many different things. It goes from, um, so first of all, it's very action-orientated, right? Um, so the idea is really to bring a difference on the ground. And this difference, though, can look many different things based on the context you're in, right? If you are in Uganda, where Vanessa is, where we also have uh, teams, let's say, that are within this busy umbrella, uh, whether it's in the Philippines, the action is going to look different because the problems on the ground are going to be different. One of the key things that drives us is really to have this people-centric approach and to understand the context, understand the territory, make sure that what we try and do is with the people. It's not like this assistentialist type of frameworks that you often have where you create dependency from external aid, but it's a way of really elevating their solutions, their knowledge, their innovation to fix the problems that they're facing, which we all agree often they haven't created <laughs> these problems in 99.9% .9 of the cases, but they are people that have a lot of resources and a lot of solutions that we can help scale and help them be the solution to the problem that they have as well by giving more funding, by giving more capacity building, more resources, more means for that to happen. Um, so we, for example, have, uh, we have different uh, type of activities. Uh, we have a whole branch which is real, uh, one of the organizations within 3.0, it's called ACTED. It's an international NGO, one of the biggest ones in Europe, and it's real humanitarian aid, right? So it's uh, 7,000 people uh, working across 45 countries that actually provide immediate relief. And that's working on the immediate survival and the immediate uh, recovery of people that live in these crisis context, right? And that's one thing that is important to do, and it's crucial to do because we can't let any leave anyone behind uh, because we forget about the most fragile people. But it's not enough. We also need to look then at fixing the system that has created this type of crisis and that continues to create this type of crisis. Otherwise, these people are going to be constantly in a crisis setting, constantly depending on external life-saving assistance, and that number is only going to grow because, of course, the consequences of climate change are going to grow and scale uh, in the next years. Um, so that's not enough, and we also need to work on creating a different capacity within these countries of working across these sectors. And I'm not saying uh, the, I don't know, European startup uh, working 
in Uganda. I'm trying to say like the actual context in Uganda to work together. And then of course we can manage to get some external actors and some knowledge and some resources. Uh, but the idea is also to create an ecosystem which is different. So for example, we've started rolling out this new concept which is three zero houses. And it's actual incubators houses, uh, like a bit the startup incubators you might have in Europe. But in Manila, in Dushanbe, we're opening one in Sri Lanka, in Myanmar. So they're houses that are geared to the local context within these countries that are most affected by climate crisis to incubate and ensure that different actors within those countries can work together and scale their solutions and be provided with means to really respond to the crisis that they're living. So this is the type of activities we do, from the more immediate life-saving to the more, I don't know, let's gather, let's discuss, let's incubate, let's find solutions, because we need all the energies at all the levels to really make a difference on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting um, some of the people who are involved in your work on the ground throughout the conference. And what really struck me is what you've been talking about, that they seem to really understand, come um, work in the local context. I'm curious to know how you ensure that, because it's obviously a, a very high objective to make sure that it's driven by the people on the ground, that you give them ownership, that you share the uh, ownership, maybe even the equity of what's happening. Do you have principles, values, policies? Is it in the DNA? What, what, what do you do to ensure that and hold maybe yourself accountable to, to it as well? I mean, to not replicate that old yeah, model mechanism. of it's, one it's a very good question the because the aid system does have a problem, right? Exactly. The aid kind system of what itself. I get to. Yeah, definitely. There is a problem of the aid system with. Even, okay, myself, I started as an intern, I was 24, I went to the Middle East, I thought I would save everybody and I knew better than anyone else, right? And it took me time to realize that it's not because I'm European that I'm any more entitled than my colleagues that were in Jordan, and that was a li bit, little bit the mentality with which a lot of us go into aid type of work. And that's a problem because you are indeed replicating schemes uh, that, that are wrong. Um, and it's very difficult to change a system, but we need to change a system. And what we are doing is, of course, most of the staff that we have are staff from these countries. Um, so I would say, like, globally, 85% uh, of the staff are staff that are actually from the Philippines, are actually from Uganda, are actually from the DRC, or any of the contexts where we work. Um, and, and they are the ones that have that local knowledge, right? If, if someone like me goes in, I will probably be out in six months, in one year, in a year and a half. I don't have the local knowledge. I don't understand how the territory has changed, what climate change means within that context, what poverty looks like, because I'll probably spend most of my time in an office, doing emails, coordinating, checking with the headquarters, I'm not the person that has that knowledge to understand and to bring the best solutions to the context. So it's a work that we do, but that the entire sector needs to do, of really putting those people that have that knowledge and using that knowledge to empower them to be the solution, not for us to come from the outside and say, this is the solution, this is how you do things, this is how you run an operation. It's a mentality shift, it's a culture shift, yep. uh, and it's difficult, One that's and very there are needed. pushbacks, and uh, yeah, it's difficult to do, but that's, th it's, there's no plan B, there is no option B, like that's how it has to be. And so for example, our three zero coordinators in the countries where we have this type of people, they are from the country. And they are the ones that know their private sector startup, that know the government, that can interact with that system, and that will be there for the long run to really make that change happen. Uh, and no one from the external perspective can bring that type of change and have that type of impact. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Gaia, last 30 seconds statement. Anything that you'd love to share with the audience as we wrap this up? Yes, that we need everybody to come on board if we really want to make a difference. Again, it's about action, it's about changing the systems, it's about making a difference at a field level. So if you're interested, if you're like philanthropy and want to find new projects, if you're a startup, if you're an innovator, if you work with government, 
please join, check us out. We have also a, actually a similar forum in Paris that is going to happen on the 5th of September. So it would be great to see everybody there, the 3.0 World Forum, uh, and, and check us out online and join us. We're still structuring a lot of things, so there are many things that will be coming up in the future. And I hope to see many people here, many people following online join Thank us. You. Put your hands together for Gaia. Thank you Thank for your you. contributions and for your wonderful thoughts. Thank you so much.